Okay, let's look again at that wood pellet example where we're thinking about building a new plant. Okay, and let's add a cost for that new plant. Let's say this new plant costs $53 million to build, um, which the latest one actually is costing that much. Um, okay, um, so that is a potential cost or the other option is to not build a new plant. So that's going to be $0 extra for the company to not build a new plant. Um, so should they build it? Should they not? Okay, now let's talk about production capacities as well. Um, so let's add that layer of complication to this example as well. So the current plant can produce 280,000 metric tons of wood pellets per year. The new plant uh, could produce 200,000 more tons per year. Okay, so that's a total of 480,000 uh, 480, tons per year uh, if they build the new plant that they can produce per year. Okay, uh, let's also talk about demands. Okay, so let's say what the anticipated demands are. Um, they could vary anywhere from 100,000 all the way to 500,000. We're going to add some probabilities, which we'll use later as well. So 100,000 demand for that's about 5%. 200,000, the anticipated demand is going to be about 10%. There's going to be a 200,000 metric ton demand, uh, and so on and so forth, all the way down to 500,000. So here are the possible demands uh, with the probabilities attached. Again, we're going to use these probabilities later. Um, okay, and one more piece here to add are the revenues. Um, so the revenues are roughly uh, $250 per metric ton sold. This is based off of fairly current information in the Excel file. I give the list of um, of links where I'm finding this information, but let's say these pellets wholesale roughly sell for $250 per metric ton. Okay, so we're gonna go get our revenues based off of that, but we need to be very mindful of our production capacity. Um, we can only sell what we can produce. So we, I, we can't sell more than what we can produce. So we're going to need to be mindful of that. So let's look at this example now in Excel. Okay, so here is our Excel file. So let's put in all of our numbers here. So our costs, um, our cost to build the new plant is um, $53 million. To only use the existing, we're going to assume there are there's nothing, no cost attached to that. Um, now revenues are $250 per metric ton. Okay, and our capacities. The current plant can produce 280,000 metric tons per year. The new plant they're considering building can produce another 200,000. So new capacity would just be the total of those two would be 480,000 if they built the new plant. Okay, and let's look at our different demands here. So let's say we have between 100,000 and 500,000 pellets demanded per year from this manufacturer, um, that, or that's the amount of pellets in, in orders that they receive. Um, currently, actually, this company has a, um, a backlog of orders. Um, they cannot fulfill all their demand in a year. Um, but yeah, moving on here. So should they build a new plant? Yes or no. So let's have a look here. Now, what we have to be really careful of is the following. If they don't build the new plant, they're not going to have enough capacity to always meet demand. Notice they can meet demand until the 200,000, but they cannot satisfy 300,000. All they can fill is the 280,000 um, that they can produce. Even here, they're going to be over, if the demand is all the way up at 500,000, they're gonna be over that. So what I really like to use is the min call in Excel to handle this. I do a minimum of the demand with the potential capacity. Okay, so let's have a look here. Build new plant, yes. That would put us at 480,000. I lock that cell reference. And I, uh, I'm just gonna lock column D there. Uh, I'm gonna take a minimum between the 100,000 and the 480. Whichever one is smaller is going to win, if that makes sense. So if there's only 100,000 pellets demanded, well, that's all that um, they're going to make money off of. Forgive the dollar sign. We're going to keep going with this formula here. Um, I'm just going to copy it down for a minute to have a look at it here. Uh, and um, if, let's say, there was a demand of 500,000, well, even with the new plant, they can't satisfy all that demand. They can only satisfy 480,000 of it. So choosing the lower of the two numbers, 
allows for the fact that um, sometimes demand is low and you're not going to use up all of your potential capacity and sometimes demand so high that you won't be able to meet demand with your current capacity, if that makes sense. Now, going back up here, so again, I like to use that min call between my um, production capacity and my demand. Now, to calculate my payoffs or my profits, what I'm going to do is go times that amount um, that I'm actually selling, which is the minimum between the demand and the capacity. I times it by my revenue. Um, okay, this is my revenue per metric ton, and these are in metric tons as well. And so times it by the $250. Now, uh, to get my true payoff, if I'm building a new plant, there's another $53 million cost associated with that. So I minus the $53 million. That's the cost of building that new plant. Okay, now I can copy that the whole way down. Okay, uh, now if I do not build a new plant, what does that look like? Well, again, do that same minimum call. So minimum between your demand. Again, you can lock that if you want between your demand and your potential capacity. If you don't build the new plant, all you can do is produce the 280,000. Lock that cell reference by hitting F4. Uh, and that will give us our actual amount that we can sell. Uh, times that by the $250 um, that we make per metric ton. And then we actually don't need to subtract anything from it. If you wanted, you could subtract the $0. Um, might be a good idea too in case you might have to do some upgrades to just keep using the existing plant. And so you could, if you subtract that $0 right here, that allows you to change that number later if you want. Um, okay, now copying that down, let's have a look here. Okay, so let's see. So now we can have a look. So if we think demand's going to stay low, well, what should we do? Probably don't build that new plant. If we really think demand's going to drastically increase, then maybe we should build a new plant. Although, Amazingly enough, looking at these numbers, with the numbers we have, um, building a new plant is actually not as lucrative as just using the existing infrastructure right now because of that $53 million cost that we first need to pay.